Hey guys, hope you're having a great week. This is part of our How Do You Do It series and how we manage a large household. This is Thursday and what we do on Thursday in our home. Now Thursday in our home is our office day, I call it. Um, back in the day I used to have it on Tuesday because it was easier for me to do that, but nowadays I can kind of have that Tuesday as a free day, as you saw in my video, free, meaning I can just fill in with other projects or things I want to do. So today is Thursday and so what I do is I dedicate most all of my paperwork to today. There are some times during the week that I have to do paperwork on different days just because we have a home business and it might be something that requires my attention, but most of the bulk of my stuff gets done today. When my kids were little, I would do it, I would wait until the afternoon until nap time so that I could completely focus and do it. Nowadays, I can get up early and I can do it in the morning before anybody's even awake. Now, back in the day, I would have lists. I would have list, list, list. Lists were my favorite thing. I would have my little notepad sitting on my countertop and it was just a small like five by seven. But anytime I thought about something because I had so many babies and like my mind was scattered because I had so much going on. If I thought about something, I'd write it on my list. I'd write my list down of the chores I wanted to do. I like, looked at something when I was nursing a baby and thought, oh, those windows are dirty. I need to you know, write that down. Um, maybe people I had to call or things I had to do, you know, different things that I had to accomplish sometime. So that list was on my countertop at all times, and that was great. Well, then a few times I've run into where my list has disappeared. <laughs> And that was very, very bad because then I go frantic looking through the house for a list. And most of the time my kids would know not to touch it, but it might have been a small toddler that didn't know and grabbed it and lost it. Or I also have ripped it off and used a piece of paper, put it somewhere and then accidentally thrown it away in the midst of just the chaos. And so that was bad, <laughs> very bad. And then I went to doing... Um, like a dry erase board. I made like a um, like the picture frame and I put a really neat scrapbook page in the back and then I wrote like um, food and um, business, grocery list, and I had different topics. I'm trying to get the ones like blog was one of them because I started my blog back then and a couple other topics on there. I'm just looking to see if I still have it on my laptop, but I don't. Um, and so it would be the, it was like six categories of things that I would usually write on my list. Cleaning maybe was one and maybe kids crafts or something. And so what I would do is with my dry erase marker, I would just write different things that I had and I you know I put it up high enough so nobody touched it and then it was just in my area and then um, I would write on there something and I just wipe it off and that was good for a little bit until someone went by and just smeared their hand on it because you know they could because it's a dry erase board and then it would be gone so I avoided that list after a while so I've tried a lot of different things and then I realized I just need to get organized and that's where I came up with this whole managing my household series and so what I would do is I put it on clipboards in my hallway you can go on my blog and see um, at plain and not so plain .com. and you can see under my managing um, a large family series and you can see where I had little clipboards hanging in my hallway and that's where I would um, clip the kids chore packs or any kind of paperwork that they needed I stuck them up on there and then also I had one for myself and each day of the week back then I um, I printed off pages to remind me what I had to do for that day and um, I clipped it. it was the same it was just a copy like from my computer so it was I, I had them um, in plastic sleeves so they wouldn't go bad and then um, I just clipped them up on the board and so I knew what was happening so you know for my um, Monday was laundry day. I wrote that down and I wrote all the things I had to do on it and um, Tuesday Tuesday was actually my um, office day back then so I would have that up there and would list all the things that I needed to get done or could get done on that day Wednesday same thing it had like my baking day and it had suggestions or things like that so it's just a reminder I know now what to do so I don't need that list anymore but that was very helpful because when you got to think about things it is just like impossible to even do that especially when you've got a million other things going on in your household so what I do is I always have some kind of designated office space and so um, in my our old home back in Michigan I um, did one in my bedroom where I could have had it because I wasn't in there a lot. I needed it in a place that I was at all the time. So I dedicated a tiny little corner of my kitchen counter space to just my area. And I had my um, planners there. I had my little basket. I had my phone and my um, electronic things in it. I had my little laptop there. And I had a bulletin board on the wall for things to remind me. And that was just my zone. And then... Um, here now in this house, I have a special place set up and I just did it recently because I was just doing it ahead in my bedroom, but I'm not back there enough during the day that I can, if I don't see something, I just won't I'll forget about it. And it's like, oh, but if I have something out that I can just glance at during the day a bunch of times, I'm like, oh, okay, I got to do that or, oh yeah, that's what I got to do. 
So here I just set up an office area, I'll show you that later, of where I have my laptop now and where I keep all of my paperwork and that I did have it in my bedroom, like I said, but my husband has now taken that over for his computer for his work and that's fine. It's actually is a lot better for me because I really like being out here because this is where I'm at majority of the time. And so I had it on my kitchen counter, but every time the child like would climb up on the counter and get something out, I was so afraid they were gonna drop something out of the cupboard onto my laptop or spill water all over my paperwork and then that would be devastation. So I put a separate um, desk out in my um, living room area and that's where my zone is now. And I'll show you that in a little bit how we do that. So what I do, I guess the key would be for my your office paperwork type things is to get rid of clutter. I think that I, I would see a lot of people just get mail and come in and all the junk mail and then they would just keep it in stacks and look at it like at a later time. For our home, as soon as I get the mail in, I, even, I don't even think about it. I look at it right then and there. As soon as I'm driving on my driveway, we have a big giant driveway. So as soon as the kids get out of the mailbox, I look at it in the van and if it's junk, I set it in a pile and we just throw it away. I don't even bother to look at the junk mail. For when we first moved here, I was getting really neat kind of junk mail, just local. And so I would look at it, but I would decide what to do with it right away. So if I, when it comes, I look at it. If it's just a credit card offer or junk, it goes in the garbage immediately. I have some kids now that really like opening mail and doing that and playing with it, and so that's fine. I let them, okay, go ahead and look at it, but then throw it in the trash when you're done. And then I open up, if it's a bill, I open it up and I rip, um, take it apart. I save the statement, certain ones I can use for taxes. And so I take that and immediately I take it to my um, files in my bedroom and I have a folder for um, tax papers. And then if it's just a little, bill paying thing, I might stick it in my little holder for my bills. Most of our bills we have um, direct deposit and I get an email or a text from that. So that's been a huge time saver, but we still have a few that don't come out automatically and I have to get the statement in the mail. And so um, it's just doing it quick. If you couldn't get them in a file folder, I would put them in one designated area. And then on my office day, I would take care of them. Most of the time I do it right away because it's so quick. But I know um, this week I was busy, I was shopping, and I got a couple mails and it was a couple bills, so I just took those and put them in my little holder for my bills. And then um, today, when I was able to take care of them, I opened them up and then I, I did what I was supposed to do with them. So as soon as stuff comes, put it in the trash. It, you know, Do with it right away what needs to be done. Don't just sit on your comic top because you'll It'll be there and it'll be a mess. I know there's not so many um, magazines that people get now because everything's online, but if you got magazines, I would stick that in a pile right away. Like when I had a lot of little ones and babies and I had a lot of nursing, or I had a lot of nursing, when I nursed a lot, I would um, set it, my magazines next to like the area I was nursing. So when I was nursing, I would go through and I would, if it was a food one, I would go through it and I'd rip out the pages right away of recipes I liked. I didn't sit there and keep them and I didn't go oh maybe I just if I saw it look good I ripped it out and put it in a pile and then I did um, this was back in the day I had a folder and I would stick them in there if it was recipes or if one was home ideas and things like that I kept them in those just so I could look at them later on when I had a chance but now everything is mostly Pinterest and you don't really need magazines anymore but if you did get those still that was something I um, would do is I'd rip it out and see it or if it was just a good um, there was some really good mom um, magazines that I got back then, just encouraging ones, and I would just read them when I was nursing. If I wanted to keep something, I would take it out and then hold on to it and put it away just to look at it, So, but not so much anymore. So that's what you do right away with your mail so you don't have piles of clutter. When I signed up for our automatic bill pane, at the back of I have a daily planner, and I'll show you. A daily planner, I think I got this one at, this was actually at the General Dollar, but Walmart has the same one. So add in the back of that planner, there is a little note section. And so I wrote down, there's, I plan our bills on four paychecks a month. And so I wrote one dash, two dash, three dash, four dash. And then next to the one, I wrote the bills that I have to pay that week. Like our first one goes to our grocery budget. And so I take that and that's part of our grocery budget. And then the second one, I put the bills that are due that week. And I know what they are each week, so I write those down. And the third one, same thing, fourth one, same one. And so that's my reminder in case I forget, because when we moved here, our bills changed. And so it's been a year now and I'm just, I'm now I can kind of know each week which ones are going to come out. But before I'd be like, what's coming out? What's due? How do I do this? And so I wrote that down. So that I know each Thursday when I pay bills, okay, this is the second week. I know that I have to pay our electric. I have to pay our our internet. And I also have to pay our, um, what else to do this week? Electric, internet. I think that's it. Electric and internet. Yeah, those are bills due this week. So I wrote that down. 
and then I know that they come out automatically. Now, if what I do, if I get an email or a text from the company, saying, you know, what bills are gonna come out, I keep it on my phone until I got time to sit down with my planner, and usually it's on Thursday, and I would open up that email and I would say, okay, it's how much, and then I'd write it down on that week so I know how much is gonna come out, and so and then I delete that email right away. So I keep it on there until I get it, and then once I copy it down, I get rid of it. And so that's something we do as well, and I do have a couple that I have to mail out, and those I just record on there. So that's how we do our bills. So I have a filing cabinet in my um, in our room, and that I, it's just a big black one. And so I have the top drawer has like our my um, bill paying supplies. I've got little cards in there, staples, things like that that I want the kids to have access to. And the next big drawer is most of our homeschool extra supplies. And so um, there's be printer ink in there. There'll be some boxes of crayons. I do have a cover out in my kitchen here that has that, but that's where most of those go. And then um, the bottom one is all my files. So eventually I'll probably maybe reduce that down just to a file folder thing, but it's no big deal. It's sitting under a desk in there and it's not really of concern, you know, that I have to get rid of it as being so big. But um, the drawer in my files, I would have a folder for each of our things I need. Like I know I have one for the 2018 business receipts. And so I wrote it on there. So as soon as I get receipts, usually I put them in my, um, my son just puts them on my desk in my little bill paying slot and I leave them there and then, or I'd put them in my little planner just and shove it so they didn't get um, thrown out. And then on my business day, I would take those receipts and put them right in the folder. If I could do it during the week, if he hands them to me, I just stick them in that folder. And so I know exactly where they go. They're in that folder. So when tax times comes, I can go through everything. And then I also have one for our um, school records because we have to keep um, receipt or records for a year. So I have one for that. I have one for our insurance. I have one for, um, I put like um, product warranties because things that we purchase and we got the warranties. I put the, as soon as I get those from the store, I put those, the, I upload the proper thing you have to do online, put the receipts in their little, the little neat little car things they get. And I stick those right in the folder. If I have any kind of, um, description of how to do things like with a product and I wanted to keep it I would put that also in another one another folder I'm trying to think what else we have folders for we also have one for medical that's something else because we keep medical receipts and then I had one for household utilities and so last year I kept that in a separate folder along with our home mortgage one and then I just realized that like when I was doing my taxes, I thought, you know, I just do it at tax time. I'll just, I knew which ones to keep and which ones not to keep. So I just put the ones right in my tax folder. So it's all in one place. Um, I think that's it. So I had tab, just a little binder tab of just things that I needed to keep. And that's what I keep in those folders. And then, and pay stubs. That was another one, pay stubs. And so usually every couple months I'll go through and I'll, um, look at them and then I throw those away and I keep the new ones and so because um, sometimes I will use those and so that's what I have I have a little thing for it then when tax time comes you know I'll grab out my folder and I know what I have I might kind of glance at the other ones and make sure there's nothing that fell in there um, but I can go through within a year and throw away the things that I don't need so that's how we organize our paperwork that way now I have a household binder back in the day. This was a much more refined binder. Um, now I have a laptop and I keep most of my stuff on there. Like I would keep in my binder, I would have um, individual tabs and one would be for menu planning, one would be for you know business related things and personal things, things like that. But I don't need that anymore because I do um, all of our um, food planning I keep online i used to do um like i would keep it in a folder and have a tab and then if i got something from magazine i would slide those recipes in the sleeve on there but i don't have to do that as much anymore back in the day i did because it was easier to get to this than it was to a laptop now i can just go to my laptop and so in my binder i had um, different suggestions for food i had different the medical things that i had to write down for my kids you know social security numbers emergency numbers but nowadays everything's on your phone or other areas so i don't do that as much but i still have a binder that I keep for um, our school and stuff like that. Our binder, I do one for our school, that's my dog, and I print off each month. And so what I do is I write down the weeks that the school week is. We always do a homeschool library party, I remind that, and then I put any kind of notes. Ruby, quiet. I put any kind of notes at the bottom that I have. And so this I keep for my school records because I have to keep how much days, which days we do school here in North Carolina. So this is what I keep in here. Um, I have one all the way through the end of the school year. I also print up an extra copy of what the kids had to do for school. I have a little binder. It's got my spelling list on it. And then here's my book list. What I did is at the beginning of the school year, I wrote down ideas and things that I wanted my kids to read. So this was videos I wanted my son to watch. This is the first grade book list. You can go through my blog and you can print these off. These were all suggested books. I might find some new ones and add them on there. So what I will do on my 
um, school day. We don't have any second grade readers, and third grade, fourth grade, and it goes through the rest. So what I would do is on my library day is I would go, okay, my fourth grader needs new books. And so I thought, oh, what books are a good series? I don't know, blah, blah, blah. Look at my list. I have a whole list of book suggestions that I can order that we have enjoyed. These were some we went through and then I realized that there was a couple other ones my kids reminded me of. So I wrote those down and I'll be adding this to my list at the end of the school year. And so this is a great time saver for myself because I'll, I'll get into that mood where I think, oh, I want to read books for my kids. And then I'll think, and then I'll spend hours looking online book ideas. And that's, that's great too. I had to do that before I had this. <laughs> what I did was I um, would scour the Pinterest boards and our people's websites and I'd write out down all, or I'd copy them actually, you know, like a WordPad document. And then I would go and order you know, 20 books at a time of those suggestions. And then when I got the books, if I really enjoyed the books, I would read it to my kids and instantly if they liked it, I would write it down as a book that we enjoyed reading. So on my site, I have tons of book recommendations based on all the work that I've done back in the day. And so, cause I would never like getting a book and going, Ugh, I hate that book or, or I didn't like getting books and going, Oh, I didn't like that book. And so did, I've saved myself a lot of work. So I have a list on my computer, which is, or on the internet, which is great. And so that's good for my kids too, because I also posted some baby videos we enjoyed and some toddler things we enjoyed because as you get older, you forget, like I don't have any toddlers now. So I forget like, Oh yeah, that was a good video series. Oh yeah, that was a really good one. So I wrote down our favorites because we've had lots of babies and I've used them over and over and over again. And I saved them on there and that's, what's really nice. So I have, I printed these off this year new. This is easy for me just to look at and I go, okay, fourth grade. And I look at boxcar children and you know, Pippi Longstock and I go through my list and I'll order them from our library and on our, this, our, our paperwork day, our office day, that's what I'll do. So I keep my library card in my little holder for my bills and I will pull that up, sit it right here, go through my list and I will order the books that I need for each child. And so that's what I'll do that day. If I also come across, we also order, we have TV downstairs for the girls so they can watch and record shows. But upstairs, the little boys have DVD players so they do watch movies each night. So I make sure that I order videos for them. We were just getting them from the library, but our library is kind of smaller and so I have to order some in. And so each week I might be, they might come to me and say, mom, I want you to get, you know, rescue bots. Or mom, I want you to get, you know, the lion guard or whatever. And so on my, when I say, okay, I'm gonna order this week. And so on my little daily planner on Thursday, I probably would write notes of suggestions of one they want. And also when I'm ordering books, I'll sit here and I'll go, if I can't think of some, I'll ask them, what kind of videos did you want me to get? And so I do that as well. So that way there's always a flow of videos that come from my boys. And so, and, and sometimes the girls too, if they want something. And so that works really well for us just to have a nice turnaround. We always go in with huge bags to our library and we, um, and she just knows to check them out and we get them and it's good. So that's what we like to do for our library books. Something happened during the month and I ran out of something in our household and that does happen sometimes. Um, I used to print off my grocery list and keep that in my binder and then I would mark down, you can see that I have like samples of them and so I would just mark down the things that I needed um, that I would run out of. But now I don't do that so much because I don't usually run out of things. So I might take a little piece of paper, like a sticky note and put it in my binder. If it was um, like the second week and I ran out of, let's say light bulbs, which I did this month. <laughs> and so normally my, sometimes I might think, oh, I'll run to the store next week. Well, no, I just wait till I go big shopping the following month. So I would take, if I can, I take my sticky note and I would put it on my little planner on the week that I would go shopping, like when I would do my planning and I would just put shopping list and I would write down the things I needed. Like I know this month I ran out of the light bulbs. I ran out of one of my light bulbs. I have the long fluorescent ones in my laundry room and it was dark in there for weeks, but that's okay. I could have went to the store and got it, but it's just one more trip there and then you might see something else you want. You'll buy more. So I wrote it down for my list and then I needed, um, ginger was something I really had a hard time finding this month when I went shopping. And so I wrote that down to get. And so just a little list reminder to help yourself. Cause when you, sometimes it's something I might not think of, but I don't normally run out of things, but if there is, I would add that to my list of things to pick up for the month. And you can go to my blog and see my pre-printed, um, grocery list. And so we usually do one, usually in the, in the summer, we'll have a new one cause we eat sometimes different foods in the fall and the winter, just things change a lot. So, but I have everything pre-printed up. That's been a huge time saver. I think for myself is sitting down and mentally going through the aisles in the stores and writing a grocery, a main grocery list. And so I would always have my list and I'd have to sit down and write it all out and that was fine too. But when I started making a pre-printed one, ugh, life got so much better. So you can see on some other videos of how we plan out food, how I have one and I have one for each of the stores I go to. 
and then um, sometimes I'll forget things and I'll write it down and then you know I'll, I'll keep that list and eventually go back and update it on my laptop so I have it um, that's something we have also wrote on my um, in my planner I write down any birthdays and things I have to purchase and I make sure I put a little note to like two weeks before to make sure I get a card or a gift for somebody just things that I have to remind myself so I know what to do most days everybody's got them on their phones reminders but I like them in my actual planner because I'll look at that at the beginning of the month I have my you know my main calendar and it'll show any birthdays and then I'll go in my weekly part and write down any birthdays that I have to remember since Thursday is our paperwork day I usually save Friday for my errand day and so Thursdays if I'm going to go shopping I get my list together I get everything that I need to get if I have to mail some bills or if I have to do an errand at a certain place I will take a little list and I'll write down all the places now I do mostly in my head but if I back in the day I wouldn't remember as well I'd take my little piece of paper and I write down all the little places that I had to run to whether I had to run in one store and pick something up or I had to go here and do something I would write that down and keep it with my main grocery list so that in the morning Okay, I knew where I had to go, so I didn't have to rethink everything. I would also do my stores in order of how you drive. <laughs> Sounds weird, maybe, <laughs> but when you drive, going in order of like turning to the right and then hitting all those stores and then turn around and go to the other stores on the other side, if that makes sense, um, instead of just crisscrossing and going all the way through town, just something we do. I know I now I usually plan out because it's so warm here. Usually I try to plan out getting my if I have anything real frozen like ice cream and stuff that's usually my last stop on my store but um, usually we plan we go to the right and we hit our discount store we hit our Aldi's and then I come back around and our Walmart and our Sam's is close together so depending on what I need to get at each ones um, I go to one or the other back in the day when I didn't have my whole life managed and figured out <laughs> I would write, I had a piece of paper on my little clipboard and on it, I'm looking at my laptop here because it's been a while, I wrote office work and so I had ideas of things to do. Now this is when I was younger and I had a lot of more, a little bit more time to think about things and I didn't have to have everything so planned out, but this will work for you if you don't have your life kind of managed out and so I would have a list of things I wanted to work on and so one of them it said spend time finding recipes for the month and so what I did eventually I had a um, master menu um, food ideas and so I um, printed, off, printed off a whole list I typed up ideas like I would sit down with a, a pen and I think what are some meals we enjoy and so I started writing them all out on my little paper and if I didn't have ideas I'd start looking when I was nursing a baby that was something I would do is I'd look online and I would write them down I kept them simple but just different ideas when I was talking to my girlfriend on the phone I thought I would say okay I can't even think of meals right now because that's how life was back then I didn't do freezer cooking I didn't do all that and I'd say give me some ideas what you're making this this week and she would just tell me and then maybe something simple but I'd be like oh yeah I forgot that we would make that and I'd write those down get help from your friends find out meals that they make with their family I mean I know there's lots of internet things we can go and look sometimes they can just be like time-consuming in that but talk to friends that like your real friends that have kids if you have a lot of kids or ones that you you know maybe go to the house and you enjoy their food and then get some of their ideas and write them down write them down and you've got some ideas for making food sometimes they're just so simple and you go like I know one was like hamburger gravy I forgot I'm like oh I haven't had that since I was a kid and I thought that is super simple to make and so just ideas it helps refresh your mind maybe you can ask your mom things you made things like that and so I started making a master list of all the foods that we enjoyed and that's how I based my when I would get my planning out for the week I would sit there with my at that time I just did a week shopping and I would plan out for the week different ideas and I kind of switch it around and so that was a good idea that I did and then I also did um, I, my goal was to make a list of uh, menu plans and so I wrote breakfast lunch and dinner and so I would come up with different breakfast ideas and I come up with different lunch ideas and different dinner ideas and when I planned my menus out before I would do different days for meals, so on Monday I put casseroles because Mondays are the busiest days and so casseroles were easy back then. Tuesdays I did soups and sandwiches because Tuesday back then was my office day so I always made a big pot of soup in the morning and then it simmered all day. And so when the afternoon came, I was able to focus on my paperwork and then I had some older kids, they made sandwiches or wraps or something. So that's what we did on Tuesdays. Wednesdays were our Italian food because it was our baking day so we would do lasagna, spaghetti, have it with bread. Thursday was our breakfast food day because we had chickens, we had 35 chickens and we had so many eggs and so oh, the good days and so we had breakfast once a week for dinner because we had so many eggs Friday was a crock pot meal because we went shopping and it was an easy thing to come home to and have it done Saturday was easy put together meals because we didn't know what we were gonna be doing and Sunday was more of our hearty meals because we had church and I just did two meals that day so I wrote that out and then when I had time on my Thursday, my, my Tuesdays back then, I would sit down and I would go, okay, let me plan out some meals for this day. And then, so these were just things that I, this is how I started my whole managing series. 
I also um, do my groceries and I, um, and I would check my pantry and I'd organize my pantry and see what things I needed to stack up on, things I needed to get. And that was something else I did. I also wrote down to do homeschool plans and this was um, different things I wanted to do with the girl. Like I had three older, three somewhat older girls and three younger kids. And so I would come up with different things I wanted to do with them because I didn't get to do homeschool groups and I didn't get to go to the library for fun. I didn't get to go do activities that we can enjoy now. So I would go and look up fun things to do with, you know, girls or neat crafts to make or things like that. And then I would do it with my kids. It was just ideas. I would, if you sit for an hour and look, you'd be surprised the list you can come up with. And then each couple weeks you can take some and do it. And then I also wrote down, um, to write a budget for the month, and I always, I usually do that right away, and so now I have my budget, I know what we're gonna do, so it's not a big deal. It was talking, we talked about saving for an emergency, save for vacation, so that was something back then I had to do because we didn't do it now, we just automatically do it. Um, I wrote down to pay bills, plan my errand day, take time for school for older kids, because this is the day I usually have a little bit more time, um, and order library books, and that was something we did. I also wrote down on my, my office day I did it on another day as well but to give baths and cut nails for the little kids now if you've got a lot of little kids you could probably go a whole week without even thinking about giving your kids a bath not that you think they're not dirty or that it's just that life is so busy it's probably the last thing you think about doing because you're constantly in a you know routine of doing this this and that so for myself I had to write that down which sounds bad but I knew that every Tuesday was bath day we did every Tuesday Thursday and Saturday and so I wrote it down. I wrote down once a week to cut their nails because that would be something I forget because I literally had 60, right now, how many have you? you? have 10, 20. I would have 120 nails to cut. And so I would desiccate me every Tuesday, which was our office day, to cutting nails because otherwise I would forget about it. And it sounds silly, but it's when you have a lot of kids, you understand. And so now I don't have to do that. In my head now, I know which days, you know, the kids, there's, I'm trying to think, we only have three, four. There's four that I don't, there are actually there's three three that I still have to monitor baths for. The rest all pretty much get their own baths and they know to shower you know, every day or every other day. And so the little ones, I just know that which days we do baths and which days we don't. So if you make a list like that, like I did, you can go to my blog and it's under my Managing a Large Family series. Um, you can see how we broke it up and it gave me lots of ideas to do on my office day. This helps so when you sit down and go, okay, today's the day I can do paperwork. And then you go, what can I do? I don't even know. <laughs> And so it gives you ideas to start preparing and planning for your family. So for my life, we I keep my planner. This is something I buy every year. I was using an electronical device and that was fine. Um, but it, for me, I'm, I guess I'm more afraid something's gonna happen to it and what happens if it erases and then all my things are gone. But some people are very reliable on it and that's fine. Keep it on your phone wherever you want. I like the old daily planner every year at Christmas. I ask for one of these and that's something I enjoy doing. Like on my Christmas break sounds maybe strange, but I get my planner out every year and I copy all my information. Yes, I recopy all my um, numbers I need to keep like social security numbers and there's most of my phone has phone numbers so um, I just copy a few that I don't like that I write Christmas cards out for and I keep those in here and then I go through each month and I copy birthdays down of ones that we remember and um, that's what I do I just enjoy it that's one of the fun things I like doing I'm probably doing these forever we have that we have our household somewhat school binder that I showed you in here nowadays I don't have to have it so full I keep our schedule for school book ideas and then extra are my printouts for, let me see here, our printouts for our, our weekly cleaning. I don't know if you can see it, but this will be something I'll talk about on Friday, how we do our deep cleaning. And that I keep extra copies in here so I don't have to print them off every single time. And so that's what I keep. I'll show you my office area. Okay, this is my office area. It's missing a laptop because I was looking at it. I keep my little phone stand here and I keep my phone right next to it. That's where I store it. This is what I have. This is my little, I keep my Bible here and a book that I'm reading, and this is it. This is just, this is our library card, so I can order. I have a pen there, I have checks, stamps, and my phone case holder, because I'm constantly running out the door, and I can just grab that instead of my purse, and then I keep a little paper, because I always have things I have to write down. So we have some Book It pizza coupons to use up. This is my calendar for March, and I wrote, took that out, because today is office day, and I have to plan a homeschool party next week at the library, and so at the beginning of the school year, I wrote down ideas, to do for that party so that I wasn't running like crazy this month. And so what'll happen is I'll plan these homeschool parties and then I'll forget that month will come and I'll go, oh, what are we gonna do? I have no idea. So at the beginning of the school year, I took time and every single month I dedicated it to something. So this is gonna be our St. Patrick's Day party. 
Um, I wrote ideas to like look up the skating place because we like to plan an outing and then um, different craft ideas. And these were things to just do with the kids. And so this was my reminder that I kept here and then I just keep it up on my thing here. And this is what I'll go to if I need to store anything. So that's my little zone. It's real simple, but this is where I'm at right now. So having a specific day just to do my task like this was such a huge relief. Otherwise, something would get thrown at me and I go, oh, I forgot to pay that bill, or oh, I forgot to do that, or oh, I'm out of library books, I gotta order some. So if I designate a set day for doing the paperwork in office day, that's when it'll get done. Most of the time something comes in, it's not a real emergency, and I go, okay, I can do that on Thursday. That's the day I'm gonna do that. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes we have business things and I have to do something during the week and I'm always like, oh, I can't wait till Thursday, but if it can't, I just have to do it, and that's where you have to be flexible with things, and so, um, but normally on Thursdays, this is what I do for all my office work, so I hope you enjoy this video and our um, How Do You Do It series, and then the next video I'm gonna be doing is gonna be on Friday, and that's gonna be our deep cleaning day, so keep watching and maybe I'll pick up some tips to help with your own home and family. So, okay, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.